Welcome to the Office of Assessment Balance Assessment System presentation on how we can use um, Access 2.0 for ELLs and connect that um, assessment to our instruction. This graphic shows the balance assessment system model for the state of Delaware. And this was talked a lot more about in uh, most likely in webinar one. Um, notice that each assessment type is color coded for clarity on how each is integrated. And so the main thing is that the main message that we want to get out about this is that, you know, um, the summative assessment can be used to assess learning while the formative assessment is used to help or for learning, okay? So the formative, the benchmarks, those are assessments for learning, whereas the interims, the summatives, including the state tests, are assessments of learning. And here's our graphic again. This is the WIDA balance assessment system model that is found on our DDOE WIDA page, or the page is actually called English Language Proficiency um, for the state of Delaware, that page. Today's webinar will delve deeper in the progress monitoring section of the BAS model. So you can take a look at it on your screen. And our purpose is in order to develop an understanding of how the Access 2.0 assessment connects to instruction, topics will include the five ELD standards, the role of standards in K-12 education, planning and lesson delivery best practices, resources on how to use the standards, a sample score report, readers can do philosophy, and um, a little bit of how you can use that information for lesson planning. Um, information from this presentation is taken directly from the WIDA website at www.wida.wisc.edu and also through consultation with our um, English learner department. WIDA English Language Development or ELD standards represent the social, instructional, and ac academic language students use to engage with peers, educators, and the curriculum in schools. The standards highlight the language needed to meet the academic expectations as described by state, college, and career readiness standards and other content standards such as next generation science standards. In other words, the five standards provide educators with a connection between language development and academic content. Standard one looks at how English learners communicate for social and instructional purposes within the school setting, and standard two on how English learners communicate information, ideas, concepts necessary for academic success in the area of language arts. However, uh, the focus cannot be just on standards one and two only. The access assessments and the WIDA standards pushes educators to think about the language students need in each content area to be successful. Focus, the focus then has to shift um, from primarily on the social and instructional language, but also um, focus on the languaging English learners need to be successful in each content area. EL teachers and classroom teachers must think about how to prepare students to understand math, science, and social studies, not just language arts. The Access 2.0 assessment does not require students to answer, for example, science questions, but it does have prompts where science is the content they're interacting with. So the assessment measures whether or not you have enough language to go into a content area classroom and understand and respond to what is going on into the classroom. The written portion in the science, um, the written portion of access is usually like in science is looking for ELs to understand what is happening in the graphics that are provided.
The EL standards, ELD standards serve as a resource for planning and implementing language instruction and assessment for multilingual learners as they learn academic content. So you can use the standards to promote and guide students' English language development, aid in the development of curriculum, instruction and assessment, encourage and maximize the use of multiple language resources in the classroom, support and frame the collaboration among educators of multilingual learners and instructional teams who serve them to ensure educational equity for all students. Um, so the WIDA, basically the WIDA ELD standards work along with the content standards to ensure students engage in the learning of the content standards as they continue to develop English. To put it all together, educators would use the grade level content standards to determine unit plan goals along with the WIDA standards to develop language objectives aligned with the unit goals. So this um, that I'm sharing here is this link. You can use this link on the screen to access lesson videos that showcase instruction that promotes language development and learning. So if you clicked on this, and I'm gonna just click on it really quickly, it'll take you to the site right here that shows real life examples and their lesson videos as well, like here, our couple posted on academic vocabulary in the classroom, fostering active comprehension of asking and answering questions, which is of course linked to um, Common Core um, or the Delaware Content Standards. So this is an ex this is where that leads to that link that's in this PowerPoint for you. Uh, we are now going to examine a sample score report. So this is a sample score report of an actual Delaware student in third grade, which provides brief descriptions of each proficiency level with a lot of visual support. Proficiency level scores are an interpretation of scale scores. On access tests, they align to the six WIDA ELD English language proficiency levels while the scale score take item difficulty into account so that educators can use them to examine groups of students or student performances over time. So this is um, an actual, as I mentioned before, an actual Delaware student report, and it shows you where they fall as far as proficiency level, and you can use this information as a starting point for instruction. The bottom half of the student score report provides suggestions that should be integrated with content areas to meet both the student's content and language needs. This approach is known as an integrated language development. The EL teacher might target specific language needs, but the classroom teachers would target the content areas. So we see where this score report can be used for both. Um, teachers. Okay. So if we take an example where of we saw the proficiency level for the student before, and now we're seeing here that level six. So it's it's showing you what students generally can do at this level. So it gives you a starting point um, when you're creating. Um, assessment or instruction, but then it also gives you a clue of where that student is, but what they can do, but also where the, where you may need to take them as well. And I'm going to show you, talk a little bit more more, more about that a, a, a few slides down. So we can see here that along with the proficiency level, this is a generic idea of what the students should be able to do scoring at that proficiency level. So the Access for ELL scores has many potential uses from determining student placement to guiding the creation of new curricula. Test scores work best as a way to aid decision-making in cases such as, here it is, establishing 
when they have attained English language proficiency according to state criteria, making decisions about program entry and exit, but there it is as well. Here's what we're talking about. Informing classroom instruction and assessment and also monitoring student progress by comparing current scores to previous scores. So that that's, that's a definitely gives you that data point. If, you're, if you use a, a, a previous um, score report along with a current score report, it really gives you a snapshot of what, especially looking at that bottom half, you'll see a greater idea of the progress that the students have made. So I'd like to bring your focus on the statements in the last column of the score report. This area highlights what the student can do in each domain area. And um, again, I mentioned that this is a great starting point for instruction, but it also um, shows the heart of WIDA's philosophy, where it is all about what the learners can do at various stages of language development. So WIDA's can-do philosophy is all about having teachers discover what their learners can do. By focusing on what language learners can do, we send a powerful message that students from diverse linguistic, cultural, and, and, and experiential backgrounds contribute to the vibrancy of our childhood education programs and K-12 schools. So this is how we the enact that can-do philosophy. They enact it through its standards that allow educators to recognize and support their students' academic language development and, and academic achievement, serving as a foundation for curriculum, instruction, and assessment. Now, also, it enacts that can-do philosophy through its assessments that build awareness of language learners' strengths and provide valuable information to educators, students, and families. WIDA's assessment design includes built-in supports that allow learners to show what they can do and serves as a model for classroom, school, and district language proficiency assessment. It also um, shows that can-do philosophy through its professional learning that is sustainable and transformative, focusing on teaching and learning that supports language learners and their families by building on their strengths. Further, it promotes dynamic collaboration among educators and meaningful student engagement, as well as research that provides timely, meaningful, and actionable results to educators to educators advancing awareness of the role of language learning in achievement along with the unique traits attributable to language learners. Okay, so WIDA's research design concentrates on supporting database decision making and also using sound policy through education systems. This graphic is pulled from the WIDA website and it shows the key instructional resources for can-do learning. You see here the can-do descriptors, the English language development standards, and the early language development standards. So um, we're going to take a look quickly at um, Weeders can do philosophy video. It's a quick clip. And it's only two minutes long, so um, we felt this was great to, to be able to show you. Hold on, I want to make sure that we have the volume.
Can you hear me? Hi, I want to make sure everyone can hear me. Can you hear me now? Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I wasn't, I, I guess I'm seeing that you were not able to hear the video. So I was saying that it's, it's a great video and I hope that um, the link will be in the PowerPoint that you can check that video out. Um, I'm not sure why the sound is not transmitting to you. So I apologize for that. Well, what I'm going to do really quickly is uh, take you on to one second. Okay. So I'm going to take you back on to, um, to WIDA's website just to walk you through some things that are on the website. So here we are at WIDA's website. If you go into um, the Assess tab, you'll be able to get um, information here. And like I said, I took a lot of this information for this for this presentation from WIDA's website as well as consulting with the, um, the English Learner Department. But um, here it is. If you go under Assess, you can see the type of scores and how to use the, the type of um, score reports. All these are found here under that Assess tab. A lot of what we're doing today in this webinar is found under the, um, the Teach tab. So first, we can click here and get to the English Language Development Standards and here are the five standards that I, uh, that you saw earlier in the presentation and how to use that for instruction. I do have that as well in the slides. And so that's, that's a little bit about um, the website here. You can also, in, in what we're talking about now is using, um, you can also look at the standards in action. And I brought this up before. Um, this, so this is how we got to this webpage. Um, again, the click through is in the presentation, but this shows you as well um, how to um, access, um, you know, seeing the standards being taught in action. So the other piece that we're going to get into is the can-do descriptors, and this is this is a wonderful tool. Um, you have the key uses edition here on this side of the screen. But on the right side, you can see the name charts. And the name charts, I'm going to click on, since that score report that we were looking at was for a third grader, um, since it was for a third grader, then, OK, it's popping up on the next side. Give me a second. Here we go. So I want to show you then here. Here are what the the name um the name charts look like um that you can pull down and you see it here by e by listening speaking um oral language and then you have the reading and writing and so within these it's telling you what each student is able to do recount explanation argument and 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 it goes into all the key uses for these can do descriptors, which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. So that's how you'd get to this information. Um, and teachers can use this um, in to help develop their small groups. So each of the, the description for the four language domains, according to the proficiency level, is listed here. Um, besides being able to pull that by just grade level, you can also pull the entire thing as well. They also have the K-12 here as well. And this is what it looks like by by clusters. So it's here as well. But the the, the name charts, teachers can use that um, to, do, to develop their small groups. OK. Let me head back to that PowerPoint. Oopsie. Okay, so now the thing with the can-do descriptors is that they're linked to 
Common Core and the Access for ELL's 2.0 assessment. The old Can Do descriptors are not based on Common Core, but the ones that I'm showing you are. So, um, so we'll look a little bit now at the Can Do descriptors, where they provide examples of academic language use for the four specific communicative purposes. And these purposes are referred to as key uses. So here are the key uses. The first one is recount, where you display knowledge or narrate experiences or event. And then they give you some example tasks, such as um, telling or summarizing stories. Um, the next one is explain, where you, where you clarify the why or the how ideas um, of ideas um, actions or phenomena. An example of that, again, is describing life cycles or sharing why and how things work. Other two, the other two key uses are to argue and to discuss. So, of course, when we argue, you're persuading by making claims supported by evidence. So, a, a, an example of that is stating your preference or opinion. And a, an example task um, for discussing is participating in the small or large group activities and projects and discussing is to interact with others in order to build meaning and to share knowledge. So remember I showed you that um, can do um, descriptive. So you'll see each of the uses in the domain area. So you can see um, the recount here and it says uh, this, this again, is a snapshot of the CANDU descriptor's name chart. So you can, you see where level one, you can put your students at place there. In level two, you can place them there. And so, for example, if you have a student all performing at level three and you place them here, this is showing what they actually can do. So what you would actually do instructionally wise is that you're going to plan your instruction at level four, expanding, because that's where you want to move them to. You want to move them from that level three developing towards expanding. Uh, this is also a great tool for classroom assessments. For example, if you're trying to assess student knowledge in a written format, it's important for you to know where the student is in order to demonstrate their understanding and so that you can assess how they have mastered the concept. So, for example, in, in writing, you, you see where students at a level one would list and uh, illustrate ideas. So you, you, you want to get them to um, level two, stating how something happens using those illustrations. So, and this is great because a content area teacher could use this as how can I get my EL learners to, my English learners to um, engage and to build that oral language as well in the classroom. So it's a great tool as well. And it does connect this assessment to classroom instruction. So to summarize, educators and early childhood practitioners can use the can do descriptors in the following ways. So you can collaborate and engage in conversation about language for learning. Um, and you can advocate for language learners to have equitable access to developmentally appropriate content. You can, this is where the crux of it is. You can use it to differentiate your instruction and your classroom assessment, as well as understanding the access for ELL test scores. I'm going to pause here to see if there are any questions or comments. Okay. If there are no questions or comments, um, this concludes uh, the final webinar in the Access series of using um, a balanced assessment model. And I hope if you have not checked out the others that you will, um, oh, I'm sorry. Let's see. I think I saw something pop up in the chat box, so I'll just check that for a second. Okay. Okay, I thought it was a question. Oh, okay. All right, so um, 
So this is the final session, as I was saying earlier. But if we take a look, this is this graphic provides descriptions of the other webinars that were um, completed for the content specific reporting and data literacy and connecting assessment to curriculum and instruction. If you've been on all three, or even if just this one, and you have a question that I might be able to answer, please post it in the chat box for me. My team wanted a way to assess students using the can-do descriptors, okay? So let me head back to these. Uh, yeah, so as we mentioned before, is that looking at what the students are able to do, this is where um, you can do a lot of formative assessment using these can-do uh, uh, descriptions. So for instance, if you were going to, if you had, um, you know, uh, well, this I think is an example of grade two to three. So you had a grade two student that's performing at emerging and you see that one of the ways in which they process explanation is by matching oral descriptions to photos, pictures, or icons. And you want to get them to um, carrying out the steps described orally. That's where you want to get them to. Or following simple sentences um, patterned orally to create patterns or sequences. So, so you see that this student that's on that emerging level, when you're having um, the, those quick formative assessments, that's something that you could create using this to create that assessment of, okay, um, here, here is what, tell me what's going on into that picture. And then moving from that into now, what can we write about what's going on in that picture? And then moving them into um, giving them two pictures and say, how is this picture similar or different to another picture? So this is how you can use these um, the can-do descriptors as a way of um, creating those quick formal assessments or even um, um, cl more classroom, classroom assessments as well. Uh, let's see, do I know of any um, assessments out there? That's something probably that uh, Maria Paxson or uh, Carrie Knight might be able to help, but I definitely will record that question and um, so that I can get back to you on that. Okay. I'm going to record your question so that I have it. And that's where I would definitely also recommend, um, Aaron, that you go on to the um, the WIDA website where I took you on to before and watch some of it in action because I think, yeah, I think you might be able to see some that's there already. So I'll, I will have to defer to um, the EL department asking um, in order to answer your question on that. I'm uh, hang on, I'm going to go back onto the site to show you where I was talking about. Sorry about that. Oopsie. Okay. All right. Oh, here's my page. Okay, sorry about that. So here on the teach where it says learning from the real life classroom examples, and there's also the discussion questions here, but you, this is where you can watch some of what's posted here as well to give you some, um, some real life classroom examples. I will find out and um, get an answer for you um, about if there are any already made formative assessments published by WIDA. Okay, I'll find out for you.
I I'm a little bit more versed just on the access side than that than the formative side. And then I see you made a content a comment that you guess um, it will be context dependent based on what concepts have been covered. And where can we find the recordings to share with others? Um, you should be able to, let me see if I am telling you the truth. You should be able to get to these. I'll, I'll get that information for you, but you should be able to get to these. Um, let me make sure first. I don't want to give you wrong information. Each of us have the balance right here on our web page. So if you go to the DOE web page and you go to assessment and welcome, you'll see the desk assessments listed there. But right underneath that, you'll see the balance assessment system webinars. And if you click on that, it should take you to, hold on, something. Oh, come on, my screen. All right, let me try that again. For whatever reason, I'm unable to see what the screen is saying. So I can click it. Come on. Okay, it's downloading. All right, so I just need to be patient for a minute. And so you should see, like, it should be a Word doc, and it should be clickable to get to the recordings. So that's where they should be. Okay. Yes, Aaron, I will I will ask that question for you um, to the EL learner department, English learners department to see. Okay, so it's downloading. I wanna make sure that it's coming up. Um, that's a great question, um, Sugli. Hopefully I'm saying your name correctly. I apologize if I'm not. So let's see, um, downloading. And so basically if you click on this, it should take you to that Word document and then you should be able to click to get to the webinar. Um, it's still downloading though, so let's see. It's taking a little time. Um, let me see if I can get to it easier from here. Because this, this one is taking a little too time, a little bit. All right, so. Let's see if it will download faster. Oh, okay, dialog box was open. That's why I would not do it. All right, so here it is. So it'll take you to a page that looks like this. And then from here, you can launch the, launch the different webinars because they're putting them on. Um, so this access webinar is a content specific one. So the others should be posted, should be um, highlighted on here soon so that you'll be able to uh, click through and get to them. So it's on YouTube the way we're posting these. Okay, so I hope that further helps. So if there are no more questions, I'm going to um, conclude here. So for additional BAS information, please, um, I showed you how to get to the webinars. Um, and But to register for other BAS courses, like we have information on the desk alt coming out uh, next week, I'm doing that webinar. That's course number 28426. And to learn about the fundamentals of, of assessment literacy, you can register for course number 28427. And I believe that's section 52145. Okay. So I want to thank Maria Paxson, um, our Ed Associate for English Learners. Um, she helped me prepare this presentation for you. And if you have any questions regarding the information presented, please contact the content education associates listed here on the screen.
and that concludes our webinar. Yes, you'll definitely hear back from me. Thank you so much.